Sir Francis Drake was a man who loved the sea. He was an expert navigator and pursued his dreams of becoming a sailor when he sailed around the world on many voyages with his cousin John Hawkins. Because of these experiences, he became a privateer for Queen Elizabeth I and made his career through plundering Spanish cargo ships and settlements. Sir Francis Drake was born in 1540 in Tavistock, Devon, Great Britain. He lived in England for the duration of his life. Great Britain is located in northwest continental Europe and has about a 90,000 square mile land area. When Drake was 13 years old, he decided to pursue his dreams of, of becoming a naval commander and became an apprentice on a trading ship. This ship traveled up and down the British coastline. Drake, like other sailors, spent his childhood at sea. Francis Drake first became a privateer when uh, he was 13 years old when the, his cousins, the Hawkins, enrolled him. The Hawkins were privateers who prowled the French coastline. Uh, Drake was given control of his first ship, the Judith, when he was about 20 years old. On October 2nd, 1567, Drake set out for Africa with his cousin, John Hawkins. Drake, I was wondering if you would like to accompany me to my next voyage to Africa to pick up some slaves. They were on a slave trading voyage, of which Hawkins commanded. After they had reached Africa and acquired slaves, they were to sail to the Caribbean to sell the slaves and finally ended up in a Mexican port of San Juan de Ulua to complete their journey and repair the storm-battered ships. Hawkins, in the last storm, the ship was damaged. Do you know any places that we can stop? I believe there is a port a couple miles away, uh, San Juan de Ulua. The Caribbean is, uh, ranges from tro a tropical to subtropical climate and is subjected to a lot of storms and hurricanes in the late summer and fall months. Now in Spanish settlements of San Juan de Ulua, slave trading was illegal. The residents, however, were willing to buy buy them if they were available. Senor, do you have any slaves? Si, sí, senor. We have them right here. What do you have to offer? All these. Let's take this into Okay. Turn off, please. Drake was a man who liked to wear fancy clothing and jewelry. He was a normal heighted man with a small beard and a mustache. He used many of the traditional pirate weapons in his battles, such as a cutlass, flintlock pistol, musket, and a blunderbuss, as well as cannon on his ships. Because of Drake and Hawkins' educated background, they did not use the same terms or words that many other pirates who came from lower-class families used when speaking. After Hawkins and Drake had acquired the slaves from Africa, they sailed to San Juan de Ulua. Their trip was going fine until they got to the Spanish port. Once inside the port, a couple of Spanish galleons blocked the exit so they could not escape. After a long battle, only two ships escaped, Drake's and Hawkins. Although many lives were lost at the uh, voyage of San Juan de Ulua, it was Drake's motivation for the next couple of years. It fueled his uh, hatred for the Spanish and ultimately led to him becoming a privateer. With his love of the sea and experience with his cousin, Drake was an ideal choice of a privateer. And so he was chosen by Queen Elizabeth I in 1572 to be one. I wonder who should be my dear privateer. I know, Sir Francis Drake. On Drake's slave trade disaster with Hawkins, he got a specific hatred for the Spanish, something that he would never forget. So by Queen Elizabeth I, counting him as a privateer for the British, and specifically against the Spanish, was like setting a wild dog from, it, from its leash. The Pirate's Code of Conduct clearly states in Rule 1, that the captain gets one share and, ha and half of all prizes. Since Drake was a privateer for Great Britain, mostly all of the loot he plundered went back to Great Britain. Please accept our gifts of our recent plunder. In addition, unlike other pirates of the Golden Age of Piracy, Drake did not have his own flag because he was a privateer. He only waved the British flag atop his mast, a sign that his, that his ship was British property and he was coming to raid your ship. In the year 1572, the same year Drake acquired his privateering license from Queen Elizabeth I, he set out for the Spanish port of Nombre de Dios. Nombre de Dios was located in Panama, and was a drop-off point for Spanish ships carrying gold and other precious metals from Peru. The Caribbean Sea is bordered by the Yucatan Peninsula, now part of Mexico, and Central America to the west. On the southern border is, is what is now Colombia and Venezuela. 
to the east and north are a long string of islands running from what is now Cuba to the islands of Trinidad and Tobago off the coast of Venezuela. When Drake attacked Nombre de Dios, it was a big risk on his part. The settlement was heavily fortified and had defenses on all sides. Although he had two ships and a crew of 73 men, the odds were more leaning towards the settlement's success rather than his own. When Drake attacked that fort, he was really confident, a trait that would stick to him with him for the rest of his life. Now, self-confidence is not a bad thing to have in some situations, but in others, such as this raid, it could really hurt you. Drake knew that he didn't have a good chance of winning the fight against the fort, but that didn't stop him from planning out his whole raid. Drake spent many hours planning out his attack precisely, so it was foolproof, at least to him. After a while of fighting, Drake was hurt in the raid, and he and his men had to withdraw. They stayed on the coast of Panama for a while, raiding settlements up and down the coast. When Drake was raiding off the coast of Panama, he ran to a Spanish mule train carrying 20,000 pounds in gold and silver. This was where he made his fortune and was really his first big success in the New World. Later in his life, Drake became the first Englishman to circumnavigate the globe and board the ship the Golden Hind. He was knighted by Queen Elizabeth I for completing that journey. Golden Hind was a galleon, about 70 feet long on the deck and weighed about 125 tons, with a speed of up to 8 knots. When Queen Elizabeth wanted to victoriously end the war against Spain, she called on John Hawking. On a typical day on Drake's ship, they would eat and drink a variety of things. Pirates and privateers all liked one common thing, alcohol. Pirate drinks were usually hearty and spicy, such as the popular Bombo or bamboo drink, which is made of rum, water, sugar, and nuts. Hey! Drake and his crew would usually eat a lot of meat or other goods that they plundered during raids, such as turtles, fish, and shellfish. But although pirates loved these foods and drinks leading to, they led to one main problem of the Caribbean, scurvy, or lack of vitamin C. Many pirates would die before the end of a voyage because of it, and the sickness killed thousands alone. Another health risk from eating and drinking aboard a ship in, in the Caribbean for a pirate was dysentery, which is an intestinal disease caused by ingesting contaminated food or drink. This is a disease from which Drake ultimately died. After sailing across the Atlantic Ocean, Drake and Hawkins reached the Car Caribbean, specifically close to Panama. When the two men learned of a crippled Spanish treasure ship, they decided to go there. Hawkins died before they reached the ship, leaving Drake by himself to capture it. However, by this time, the Spanish had learned he was coming and defended the ship. Failing to capture it, Drake decided to go and attempt to capture many other cities, but failed again. He soon realized that his voyage would not be successful. Drake then aimlessly sailed back and forth to Honduras and died from dysentery in 1596. He was buried at sea off the coast of Portobello, Panama. Overall, Sir Francis Drake was born to a farming family and created a life of privateering for himself. His hatred toward the Spanish fueled him throughout his career as a privateer against Spanish ships. Although he did his country well, many Spanish of his time had bad feelings towards him. Through mixed feelings towards him and many different people, he definitely made an impact on the world at his time and will be remembered for years to come.